All right, in this lesson here, what we're going to do is take a look at doing some keyframe animation on our actor face, which, as you saw in the last lesson, is connected up to the character face. Now, we've got Mr. Zach in the hot seat here, and he is now going to show you how we would first go about bringing some audio into our Sorry. scene. That's okay. <laughs> I, I looked at that. I saw what you was doing. Good enough. Yeah, it. obviously, one of the important things is the ability to go ahead and bring some audio in. Absolutely. And he's going to bring some audio in, and what he doesn't know, I'm about to show him real quick, is uh, or tell him, is that we can't do a lot of scrubbing here because we are really stressing our audio if you will, on the system right? Um, with recording audio and pumping it back through the mixer and back in and playing it at the same time. This we've, computer might explode. Yeah, we've already done this a couple of times, and it's it's becoming a little frustrating because too much scrubbing will cause this to just die on us. Right. So Zach is going to show you how we could go about bringing audio into the scene, getting it set up so that you can see it on the timeline and everything, and then how you can scrub. But at, from that point, uh, Zach's just going to make up some animation without scrubbing the audio just so that we can keep the system from locking up on us. Exactly. What I really want you guys to see how we can do, or guys and gals, let me be PC here, uh, we're going to go ahead and show you how you can scrub through the, the sound so you can actually listen to it. You'll be able to listen to it in like fast motion, slow motion, so you can get really get a feel for not really the words that are being said, but for the kind of sounds that will be coming out of your like the mouth of whoever speaking. And then you can be, you'll be able to change the sliders here inside of your actor face to make your character actually seem to mouth those words, to make the same sounds. That's right. So the first thing we need to do is get some audio in here. Now, on our computer, we have a Motion Builder audio file. You won't actually have these. This is not a standard file that comes inside a Motion Builder. This is something we set up as a favorite path. So you guys learned how to do that in the first video. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the 3D Buzz Wave into the scene, and let's go ahead and play it once and just listen to it. Welcome to 3D Buzz. This is an example of facial animation with Kadara's Motion Builder. Okay, so there's Buzz coming at us actually in two directions now. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can get this into the time slider just so you can see the waveform because that can really help when you're actually trying to animate this stuff by hand to see where like if you hear a loud sound you'll be able to actually see it much like you see it right here like here's except for we may not actually be on the audio settings pane down there we may have it locked on the actor faces pane well, which we're going to need exactly so being able to see it up on the timeline is a really good thing like just uh, looking at this we know it says uh, welcome to 3D buzz and that welcome is stressed very loud when buzz first says it and so we can actually see the waveform really pick up right here so we know one, what's being said, and we know what parts to emphasize as we animate. So let's go ahead and get this waveform into our transport controls. I'll go ahead and open up my audio section here in the navigator, and I can just drag the 3D Buzz Wave into the timeline, and you can just barely make out that waveform. Actually, if I drag this down, let's expand our timeline just a little bit. Then we can actually see the waveform uh, very faintly as white in the background. Now, a lot of you may know that dragging on a timeline, once you've got audio in there and other 3D applications, will then let you hear that sound as you're scrubbing back and forth. Exactly. Works a little bit different inside of Motion Builder. Right. Now, let me go ahead and enable scrubbing. None of what I'm about to show you will work unless the enable scrubbing checkbox is activated. And we'll go, since I kind of adjusted my timeline, I'll just hit rewind so we snap to the front of it. This is where we get into a very delicate position with recording this VTM right, right. now. Right. I will show you guys how we can scrub, and then what I'm going to do is just pretty much make my character mouth the word welcome, and then we'll see how that's actually done, how we keyframe animation. I, I'll just do it for you. I'll be like, welcome. Oh, I have like an honest... 3D scrub over here. That's <laughs> that's going to be creepy. Uh, but either way, either way we do this, the just simple fact is we're not going to be able to sit here and keep scrubbing through this over and over, or this computer might explode and take half the house with it. So, uh, I love exaggerating. Okay, so we'll go ahead. I'll try scrubbing once. I'm going to hold down the J key, and then with the left mouse button, I'm just going to drag a little bit. Now, before I do that, here's how this works. This is like an analog scrubber, which some of you who might have a sound background might be used to, in that it's kind of like a knob, and the further you turn it, the faster your scrub goes in either direction. So as I hold down J, hold down the left mouse button, and start to scrub over a little bit, we get slow motion. That's good. And the faster we go, the the faster it'll scrub until Buzz sounds like a chipmunk. Yeah, We're not this, yeah Buzz, Buzz is just stressed that we don't want to lose this again because we've already gone through this several times. Exactly. So uh, there's how you scrub. You guys now know it's holding down the J key using the left left, left mouse button. And again, I do want to uh, say something. 
uh, to reiterate the fact about it kind of locking up on it. It's not necessarily Motion Builder. It's the fact that Motion Builder, with us going through and scrubbing this audio and with the methods that we use for recording the audio at the same time, we're really pushing this card pretty hard right now. Absolutely. And that's what seems to give us a, tr you know, a little bit of a problem. If we take and stop recording audio ourselves from an outside source and then just go about you know, scrubbing, it's fine all day long. Right. Uh, I've actually I've done this several times now and had not a single problem with Motion Builder. We only started having problems when we actually tried to record both microphones into the computer and play a WAV file at the same time and scrub through it and animate and then... Then, yeah, that's not good. So we start to get problems. At this point, now that we've seen how we can actually bring audio into our scene and how we can enable it for scrubbing, let's focus on keyframe animation. That sounds good. So I'll come in here under actor face. We sounded like a couple of agents again right there. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and slide my transport controls up just a little bit to shrink them down so I can take my navigator and blow it back up just to get a few more listings here. And let's say I just want my character to mouth out the word welcome. 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 So there's a couple of ways that I can go about this. The first thing you're probably going to want to do is place a key on every one of your channels. Now, it would be really dull to have to sit here and with all... 900 billion channels you might have. Sit here and click the little K key on each and every one of these. So if you just select the first one and you hit the key button over here, well, that's the only one that keys. That's okay. Or we could just go through and shift select all of those yeah, channels that's, over that's, there. That's what I did last time, and I just kind of, that's okay. Zach was kind of off in Never Never Land. Yeah, I was like, wow, Zach's about to show me something, something I didn't, I didn't know. know. It's going to be cool. It's great. Nobody knows it because it's just not true. Uh, we're not going to worry about be animating the left brow. We only want to animate the mouth. So we'll just key all of the uh, channels on the mouth. Key them all at the same time. So now they're keyed at oh, the first frame. That's how I knew it worked. Yeah, well, there okay, you go. So. Once again, Zach tries to show off and crashes miserably. All right, no problem. No, no, you didn't. Now, come on. All right. So let's go ahead and try to mouth out the word welcome. The first thing I think needs need going, out, bleh, bleh, going to need to happen is the mouth is going to have to open. Okay. So let's go ahead and drag our time slider up. We can actually see the waveform in the back. So if we want to kind of use that as a reference, we can. We don't have to scrub through this. We'll just kind of pretend. <laughs> I'm thinking about welcome. Instead of opening, well, well, yeah, first thing you're doing is actually pursing those lips. Well, okay, but we're going to, uh, yeah, but pursing your lips while you're closed, you get this kind of fish effect. Mm -hmm. And nobody Keep can see going. me do that, but anyway, so... Uh, nobody wants to see you do that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead. We'll open the mouth just a little bit, and maybe we'll take the whistle and start to bring it up. Okay. And so that kind of starts to bring the lips together just a little bit. Nothing major, because, you know, when you're just talking normally, you're not really emphasizing any of your syllables very, very clearly. You just kind of, you just really relax, like, right? welcome. And if you watch yourself in the mirror, when you just say welcome to somebody, you bring your lips together, but it's nothing really crazy. And really, since that's the amount of animation we have, that's what we're going to use. Typically, if this were like a big project and I was trying to get perfect uh, example facial animation, what I'd be doing is sitting in front of a mirror and creating my own blend shapes inside of Maya that looked absolutely perfect. But I'm going to go ahead and complete this animation with our generic channels. So let me go ahead and key these out here. And then right about here, we'll get to the E, so for like, well, welcome. So maybe I'll open the mouth a little bit more. We'll slide back on this. And let's go ahead and bring the corners of the mouth out just a little bit. And I'll just go ahead and key everything I just moved. So, well, no, okay. not, not looking too bad. Now we need some kind of an L sound. Now we don't have any uh, sort of a blend shape that just changes the tongue right now. Uh, we have we had one set up over in the character thing, but we don't actually have a channel established just for that. So what we're going to be doing is just kind of bringing our character's mouth pretty well closed so you won't be able to see the tongue anyway. Well, let's see. L should be right about here. I'm doing my own scrubbing now. Yeah, that's cool. fine. And we'll go ahead and bring the mouth down a little bit. Let's say right about there, maybe. And I'll just key it because that's the only channel that I moved. So we got well. The tongue comes up. Yeah, the tongue's but it's behind the teeth. Yeah. It actually did come up. I'm sure. <laughs> well, cut. Let's see. We need a cut kind of sound. So we got to kind of fake that a little bit. Then we'll bring in mouth square a little bit. Let's try this. We'll go ahead and place a key. 
very close to where we just placed this one. In fact, let's go ahead and bring my timeline really close together. For those that are wondering, obviously, if this was the real deal, what we would have done is set up a bunch of custom phone name user channels. Right. Very, very rarely are you going to try to actually animate out a character speaking, a conversation, a soliloquy, anything like that, without having a whole big, long stack of facial expressions of your mouth saying different sounds. And, uh, you know, the best thing you can do is really go to your local store and pick up a little shaving mirror or something and just have it by your computer and watch yourself talk. So just kind of moving along, let's see, we'll put a keyframe very close by with it blends into the mouth square, kind of make his jaw pop open a little quick for the cuh sound. And I'll try keying this, see how this is looking. Well, uh, it needs to open up a little more right there. So I'll go ahead and jump back to that keyframe. And let's just pull my mouth open just a little bit, I'm thinking. And we'll key that. Well, cuh. Not bad. And we just kind of need to really blend everything back down to an um, which is just bringing your, uh, bringing your mouth back close. So we'll go ahead and drag all these back down. And don't forget mouth square that we set way back here. And now with all these selected, we can just go ahead and hit the key button again. And let's show well come. Okay. Not bad. We can play through that if we want to. Welcome. That's not bad, actually. I mean, if, as we uh, watch that play across, it really sounds like he's saying welcome. Welcome. And I don't want to play that too many times because, who knows, the machine might explode again. <laughs> okay, well... Actually, at this point, is there anything else, Zach, that you wanted to show? Or is that pretty much going to cover That's just basic keyframe animation? That covers it right there. We got all the way through one word, and I know it's a small step. But, I mean, if we go on, like, we could just grab our timeline and move it down and then attack the next word. It's going to become very repetitive in this lesson. And people will get bored and send us letters, and we just don't want that. That's right. So, quick recap. Basically, what we did is in this lesson, we showed you how we'd go about bringing some audio into our scene by simply dragging and dropping the wave into the viewer. Once that was established, and we went in there and we enabled inside the audio settings pane, we enabled the ability to scrub the audio. Then we showed you that we could simply grab, okay, we could grab that audio and drag and drop it up into our timeline. And then once we did that, we could then uh, use J after we had enabled the scrubbing to be able to scrub through the timeline so that we could then hear the actual audio. Absolutely. And Zach talked about it being like an analog scrubber where while holding the J key down on the keyboard as you scrub back and forth by dragging your mouse left and right, it'll go forwards, backwards, and you can control the speed, which can be very handy while you go in there and you're tweaking out all of your keyframes, listening to that Absolutely. audio nice and slowly. It can be very freaky, too, to take Buzz and make him sound like a little chipmunk. Okay, yeah, he was doing that all day long. So, <laughs> basically, that's it. That's going to cover everything that we wanted to talk about in this lesson right here. So, thank you guys very much. And just as a quick reminder before we take off, yes, one uh, quick remember, reminder. we are animating with the actor face. We're not using the character face at all, just in case there's any confusion from the last lesson. That's right. Actor face is driving the character face, which in turn drives the blend shape. I just want to keep throwing that out there in case people are getting confused. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everyone.